Come on, make some noise if you're excited to be in God's house today. It's a good day to be in God's house, man. I'm excited about this series that we're in. We're in this third installment of a series we've called The Art of War. How many been enjoying this series? You guys been enjoying this series? More than ever, ever, honestly, in any of the teachings that I've, that I've done over the years I've been teaching God's Word, more than ever, I've heard this phrase used, and, and it's, it's a repeating phrase. It's just so powerful. I've heard this phrase, this is changing my life, so many times in this, in this series. People have said, literally, this is changing my life. In fact, Pastor Veronica just yesterday got a text message that began with, this series is changing my life. And begin to explain how, and we're hearing so many testimonies, not just with that statement, but so many stories of how God is breaking strongholds in this series. And uh, strongholds of, of mental strongholds of anxiety and disorders and, and attitudes and addictions and marriages are seeing freedom. And, and even like gender identity and confusion, people are experiencing breakthrough. Come on, give God some praise if you're experiencing some breakthrough. Uh, if you missed any of these messages and you're, you're new to discovery, they've been building on each other. A couple of weeks ago, I asked intentionally and challenged you guys to go on a journey with me over the course of about four Sundays. And then there's even these daily devotions, but I challenge you guys to go on this journey and go all in and, and just to see if, if by engaging in the battle, engaging in this spiritual warfare battle that you could be in four weeks, you could be more free than you have ever been or have been in a long time. And I truly believe that. And some of you have taken me up on that challenge, and I'm, ex I'm thankful for that. Some of you are here, kind of new to Discovery, and I'll still extend the same challenge to you. What you got to do, though, is go back and watch those two messages because they kind of build on each other here. But let me kind of explain. We talk about spiritual warfare. What is it? And I'm, and I, and I'm grilling this into you guys so you would understand what we're battling, okay? What is spiritual warfare? One more time. It's the fight to believe and obey God's truths rather than the enemy's lies. So the enemy is lying. That's his tactic. That's his tool. He wants to deceive and lead astray. And the way that we engage in this battle is we take captive those thoughts and lies and we bring them into the obedience of God's word, God's truth. And when we choose and obey God's truth rather than the enemy's lies, that is spiritual warfare, okay? If you're not in that battle, you're in bondage because the enemy is lying. So if you're not in the battle of taking thoughts captive, then you're accepting every thought and therefore you're gonna be in bondage your entire life until you engage in the war that's all around us. Now, in this third installment of the series, you guys, um, there's still a lot of strongholds we need to discuss. And Pastor Veronica and I, every day, we're going to be discussing some, some more, you guys. We're going to be talking about generational curses, addictions, and past wounds. And so there's some things that we still need to address, some strongholds that need to be demolished. But I need to turn a corner in this stage of the teaching. Because there are other aspects about spiritual warfare that are just not about demolishing strongholds. Because deliverance is not the goal, dominion is. Let me say that again. Deliverance is not the goal, dominion is the goal. So, so I, I, I need you, we, what we've been talking about for two weeks is how to identi identifying and demolishing strongholds. That's what we've been doing. For these next two weeks, I need to teach you how to, how to stand and take dominion. How to stand firm and, and have victory, take dominion. So, that's, the, so we need to kind of turn the corner and teach you some things about this side of spiritual warfare, that it isn't all defensive. It's not all just, help me break the stronghold. There is, look, you're the head, not the tail. You're above, not beneath, okay? There's, there's another part of warfare that you need to understand that I need to start shifting to so that we can actually take some new ground and break some cycles that have been repeating probably in our life. Because here's the reality. I think you all can sympathize with this. Uh, every one of us here could probably sympathize with this kind of cycle where we're doing good for a while, like maybe days, weeks, months, or even years. Like you're walking in victory. You have like, and that you've broken a stronghold or whatever. And you're like, you're, you're doing good in that area. But then, um, you know, he just comes on back and, and trips you up again. And there you go, go back to the things that you said you were free from. Back to the mindsets that you were free from. 
Back to the habits that you were, that you were free from, okay? And so there's this cycle, this pattern. If any, if any of you, which is every single one of us, I believe, have that pattern going on, if that's you, though, today, this message is for you because I need to teach you how to stay free. Now that God has broken some strongholds and you have taken captive thoughts and you're experiencing a little bit of freedom here, how do we remain in that place, standing in the freedom that God has given us? How do we, how do we, is that even, is that even possible for us to actually be like totally, finally free? Okay, let me show you. John chapter eight, verse 31 through 36. It says, to the Jews who had believed, so these are other believers, right? To the Jews who had believed, these believers, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you really are my disciples. And then there's a period, and then he says, then. Here's, here's what I need you to see. Salvation is just the beginning of an amazing journey that God has for us. It is a wonderful, powerful journey, but there is so much more that God has for us. Jesus says, if you hold to my teachings, you're my disciples, then you will know the truth. So there's, there is a journey after, after coming to Jesus. Listen to me. There is a journey now that you and I need to go on of truth knowing. There is some truth that you don't know, that you don't have. You may be free. You may love Jesus. You may know Jesus. But there's some truth that you need to know in order for you to be free. Because when you know the truth, then you shall be free. Okay? So there's, this, there's a process here of truth knowing, of us learning and growing through teaching, through sermons, through groups, through studying, that as I know the truth, it is producing freedom inside of me. But look what they say. They answered him, what are you talking about? Be, be free. We're Abraham's descendants. We've never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean, what do you mean be, be free? You know, we're, we're free. Can I just put this in a translation, kind of today's translation? This would be us going, what do you mean be free? I am free. I'm a Christian. I, lo- I go to church. I love church. I love God. I even go to night of worship. I love worship. I, I, you know, so what do you mean be free? You're saying I'm not, I'm not free, pastor? How can you sh- say that we shall be set free? Uh, Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who has, look what he says, who has any sin in his life is a slave to it, which brought everybody who thought they were out of the conversation right back in. Because they're, oh, because I, okay, because I still got that habit. I still got that attitude. I still got that thing that keeps coming around every now and then I'm good, but then it, it comes back uh, around. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to heaven and stuff, but I still got this thing. And Jesus says, here's the problem with that. A slave has no permanent place in the family. Let me say it a different way. You're just not receiving all that God has for you. You're, you're like, so you're going to heaven. You're just not experiencing the abundant life that Jesus talked about was available to us that we would live on this earth. But he says, but a son, someone who connects to that dynamic that Jesus made available to us, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be, say it out loud, you will be free indeed. So, so that's, that's what we've been doing in this series is like breaking strongholds and experiencing freedom. And the question today is like, can you be finally free? Can you be totally free? Can you be like, once and for all, where it doesn't come back again, nagging and haunting and returning, can I actually be free indeed? The answer is a resounding, yes, you can. You can be absolutely free. So today I want to talk to you and take a whole new look about this spiritual warfare journey because I'm hearing all the great things that God's begun to do in your lives, but we're going to answer this question. How do I stay free now? I mean, that's good. I'm, I'm great. I, I've experienced, but how do I, how do I stay here, man? Because I've been good before. It's been good before. How do I stay here, pastor? Like this series, I'm telling you, God's word's going to work. You're going to identify lies, take captive thoughts, and demolish strongholds. This series is going to work for a little bit, and then he's going to come back and knock on your door again. And then he's going to come. In fact, Jesus actually told a story about this paradigm or this dynamic that we know very familiar, this idea of just like being free and kind of in this cycle that we go through. Jesus actually told a story about this very cycle in Luke chapter 11. Let me show it to you guys. Luke chapter 11 verses 24 through 26. It says when in, Jesus speaking here, he says, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert 
searching for rest. Now, let me time out right there and just kind of, because some of you are like, wait a second, you trying to say I have an evil spirit, Pastor? Hold up. So let me kind of theology here, okay? I've told you guys this in week one, but let me remind you. If you're a believer in Jesus, you can't be possessed by the devil, okay? If you're a believer in Jesus, you do need deliverance from strongholds. Unbelievers, those who don't have Jesus, they need deliverance from demons, okay? But just because you don't have a demon doesn't mean that a spirit can, can, be, have a, can actually have an area of your life. So that's what a stronghold is, is actually areas of our life, of our thoughts, of, of, our, of our being that we've allowed the enemy to have access and control and authority over. He's got a stronghold in the area of our life. So this is what Jesus is talking about here. Jesus is talking about when we have allowed the enemy in the spiritual, the spiritual warfare is happening, and it's absolutely real. We've allowed him in. He says, look, when an evil spirit leaves a person, when that stronghold is broken, it goes into the desert searching for rest. But when it finds none, it says, and I know this is a bummer, he says, I will return. He says, I'm coming back. I know that's a bummer, I know. But this Jesus is trying to make us aware of a dynamic that is real in spiritual warfare. There the spirit goes, no, I know I'm coming back. I'll, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home, that's your life, that's your life, is all swept and in order. Yeah, I got my act together now. Man, that was a great series, Pastor. I'm different. Ooh, night of worship, I'm free. Come on, uh, all swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they all entered the person and lived there, came through the same door that he, came, that, he came, that he left from, accessed the same place, the same stronghold, but he brought seven other with him. And he says, and, and so that person is worse off than before. So there are moments in God's presence and in God's power that you can experience freedom and breakthrough. But if you don't know the truth, then you're going to get tripped up by the same old lie. He's going to come through the same, and it's different for every person, but it's a, it's, it's a different door. It's a different stronghold, but he's going to come knocking on it again. He says, I will return, and I don't mean to be like, like the bearer of bad news on you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to deal with this my whole life. No, no, no. He's not saying this to prophesy evil over you. He's trying to just, this is like a warning. There's a warning scripture he's telling you. He's not saying this has to happen. He's saying, if you're aware of it, you could stop it from happening, okay, if you know the truth. Then that truth will set you free. Let me give you the example of this because some of you, you know, it's that it's maybe the, the stronghold of lust or sexual addictions and sexual strongholds. And if you don't know the truth, not just that you have a physical lust thing, if you don't know the lie that you're believing and the door that's actually being open for the enemy to come through, then you will always be bound to that lie. You'll always fall for the deception. So if you don't know the truth, that you actually, you're, you're looking for longing and acceptance and love, and you don't feel it unless you're in another girl's arms because of the way that, that you were raised or the rejection and abandonment that you have. You got to be in an intimate relation with another woman and holding her every time you're with her, you're clinging and clinging and clinging. And, and until you realize that you can only be loved and accepted and belong in Christ, you will continue to open the door to her. Okay? So there's... And that's an example of just the door. You need, to, you need to know the truth. It's only the truth that can combat the lie and set you free. He's warning us of a dynamic that's going on, a cycle that can happen that we're all very familiar with. And by the way, this cycle doesn't just happen in people's lives, okay? It's not just something that happens in people's lives where we get free and then come, come back and back. This happens, this cycle happens in everything. It happens in countries and in governments, it happens in marriages. It happens in businesses. This cycle happens in, in, in every single thing. I love, I, I love learning about history now. I didn't like it in school, but now I like it. It's, it's kind of cool to me to like look at history and learn from history. You know, we're the, one of the oldest nations under the same constitution around. One of the oldest nations we are. We're a pretty new nation, but we're one of the oldest with the same constitution. And, and the reason is because this cycle we're talking about keeps coming back around. So let me show you the cycle. I'm going to expose this cycle so that you can see it, and then we're going to break it, okay? Because the cycle begins with, write this down, it begins with freedom. We experience freedom and breakthrough. There's a little blue face, brave heart, and all of us yelling, freedom! 
Like inside of you, you want to, you got some fight inside of you that wants to, wants to break free from tyranny, that doesn't want to stay in the condition that we're in. God put that fight in you. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He'll stir inside of you to where you think like, man, my life doesn't have to be this way. Man, I don't, I don't have to live like this. I believe it's the same spirit of God that I think enabled the Revolutionary War to get out from under the oppression of, of rule and taxation and those types of things that we're going to declare independence from you. We're going to, we don't want to be oppressed. We want to be free, okay? God put that inside of you. Here's the challenge, though, with freedom. And that is when you, when you experience freedom, it will always move your soul, your life, your government, your marriage, when you experience freedom, it will always move you into prosperity. You will prosper. Okay, every place where there is freedom, that government, that country, that person experiences a prosperity of their soul. And I'm not just talking about like finances. Or sometimes it's, it's that, yes. But freedom produces a, man, my life is better. My marriage is better. My, 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 my life is, is, is better. But here's the challenge with prosperity. It often breeds complacency and pride. We stop doing the things we did at first. We get comfortable. We get complacent. We get, oh, I'm good. I'm good now. I I got this. So this is how it plays out like in our government. Our government was free. We got free. We broke free from rule and taxation and became a nation, and it produced prosperity. And now what we're doing is not stewarding the prosperity. Here's what it looks like for a government. Spend, 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 spend. That's what it looks like, okay? Our government is spending 40% more than it's coming in. From all the taxes that are coming in from citizens, 60% of the budget for the United States of America, that's only covering 60% of it. We got to borrow 40% from other countries to cover our annual budget. Can you imagine if you did that for your home? If every month you had to borrow 40% to pay your debts, okay? That's ridiculous. That's, that's, that, that's what... That's what happens when you don't know how to steward your freedom and the prosperity that it brings. If you don't know how to steward it, here's the cycle. Freedom, prosperity, I don't know how to, how to steward it, and it'll lead always back to this third step, which is bondage. And the cycle starts back over again. And you look all throughout the histories of countries and businesses and marriages. This cycle repeats itself. And you can see it play out. You get freedom. You you start to experience prosperity. Your soul begins to prosper. You don't steward it right. So it leads right back into the bondage. And then after a while in bondage, you go, man, I don't have to live this way. I can be free. And you break free. And you experience freedom. And for a while, you start to prosper. And again, you don't handle that prosperity the way you're supposed to. And you go back into bondage. Come on, are you seeing these guys? Are you seeing the cycle? Do you see how it plays out in your life? The cycle of freedom, prosperity, and bondage. It happens in every single area of our life. It happened to the early church. The early church experienced freedom. They experienced freedom freely through faith in Jesus by grace They were free, man, broken from the law, broken from religion, broken from all shackles, man, and it produced a prosperity of their soul, the fullness and the power of the Spirit, unlike any generation had ever seen. Freedom and prosperity, yet in the apostles' lifetime, they didn't start to steward the prosperity. And then they started going back into bondage because of it. In fact, that's what Galatians is all about. The whole book of Galatians is about that fact. That the church stopped stewarding the freedom and prosperity that God gave their soul and they were entering back into bondage. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, the apostle Paul tells the church, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. It's the reason why Jesus came so that you don't have to live in bondage and in those strongholds anymore. But key verse here, he says, stand firm. Somebody say stand firm. Stand firm then and don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery, which means you don't have to s- repeat the cycle again. Like it can, it can stop. Oh, pastor, I would love for it to stop. How do I break this thing? Here's how. You got to understand freedom comes in two forms. There's two forms of freedom. There is freedom is both a moment, like it's a moment 
It can happen in a moment, God's presence. When God touches you, you encounter God, and there is breakthrough. There is, there is freedom in his presence, but it's not just a moment. It's not just in, and the biblical word for that is deliverance, by the way, where God delivers you in a moment, but it's not just deliverance, it's also discipleship. So, so freedom isn't just a moment, it's a journey. It's something you have to walk out. And now for you to stay free, you got to go on this journey. And in order for you to stay free, that journey needs to include you getting around some brothers and sisters in Christ. It needs, if you're here, if you're a part of the Discovery family, it needs to include a small group where you get, some of you need to get into a, a Celebrate Recovery group where you finally start dealing with the habits, hurts, and the hangups that you're doing. Or maybe it's, if it's lust and sexual addictions or strongholds that keep tripping you up, you need to get into our pure desire group. Or if it's anxiety and depression, you need to get into an anxiety group. Or whatever it is, you need to find a group and start doing it with others and open it up. Okay? It needs to include, you got to go on a journey now. Because it's not just a moment. It's about discipleship. you got to walk that out. So here's what I want to do for the next two weeks. I want to teach you how to stay free and walk in victory. How to stay free. Now, just because... Um, you're free doesn't mean you have the victory. Just because you're free doesn't mean you, have, you, you don't have victory yet. You may, you may have your house cleaned up, but you don't know the truth, that truth that sets you free, the truth that's going to give you the victory. I'm going to show you how to stand firm and take div- dominion, two very important aspects of spiritual warfare. Stand firm and taking dominion, okay? These are the offensive sides of spiritual warfare. Today, we're going to talk about standing firm. Ephesians chapter 6 will probably be in here for the next two weeks. This We're talking about uh, the armor of God next week, okay, as well. Let me show you, though. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong. Someone say, be strong. Over 30 times in the Bible, God tells you to do that. Be strong. Be strong. Be courageous. Here he is telling us, be strong. But look what he says. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So, so are, are you standing in Christ or are you standing in your own strength? Are you standing in him or are you standing in the world? The problem is in, when, we, when we go through and we, get, we, we don't have victory in spiritual warfare, it's because we keep flip-flopping, man, from king, one kingdom to, to the next. We've got to understand Satan is still the ruler of this world. Okay, he still, he, he, he lost his authority, but he didn't lose his power. Satan still dominates the world today because he retained his power. The reason why we wind up not being victorious in spiritual warfare is because we keep flip-flopping sides. We come to church in one kingdom, and then we go and work in our jobs in another kingdom. We have our devotion in one kingdom, and then we go hang out with our friends and get under another kingdom. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're responding today. Is it oh me or amen here? Come on. We keep flip-flopping kingdoms, and we wonder why we don't have victory. We wonder why we can't get over the hump. We wonder why our prayers aren't getting answered. We wonder why our battles end in defeat. It's because you're not remaining in Christ, standing in. See, the answer is simple. The enemy is victorious in our lives because we are yielding the power to him by not standing in our identity in Christ. We are failing to firmly remain in the union we were designed to have with Christ under his leadership, under his headship, in Christ. Let me give you a few verses all throughout the scriptures. It tells us this is our position of spiritual warfare, in Christ. Romans 8.37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How many of you want to be a more than conqueror? Not just conqueror, but a more than conqueror. Look what he says. You are more than conquerors through him. Who loved us? That's where our victory is in him. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, not because you fought for it and you battled and you prayed for it. No, no, look what it says. Who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I get my victory in him and through him. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. This is your position in spiritual warfare, is to stand in Christ and in the power of his might. It's the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. And the reason why you become powerless is because you keep transferring kingdoms. You're not standing in Christ, your identity in Christ. 
Let me go back to Ephesians chapter 6. I know I'm going all over the place in your handout. Ephesians chapter 6, you guys. Start at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. I'm going to teach you about this armor next week, okay, and how you can, why you need to put it on and what it actually does in spiritual warfare. We'll talk about that next week. Put on the whole armor of God. But when you look at this motivational speech that Paul has given to the Ephesian church, you would think that, that the command to be strong would be to fight, especially when he's talking about armor and soldiers. Be strong so you can fight, but that's not actually what he says. That's not the position of war. That's not the position of the battle. Look what he says. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand. That's my position. Stand against the schemes of the devil. How do we stand firm and remain in him? in his kingdom, under his authority, under his headship. Look what he continues. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to, here's this word again, withstand in the evil day. And having done all that, (laughs) to stand firm this is the place that this was the whole purpose of of being aware of his schemes of being equipped with armor of 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 spiritual warfare the whole purpose was that i would stand firm on a firm foundation in christ this is my victory let me say it like this we don't fight for victory you fight from victory this is the position of spiritual warfare that we have to understand, you guys, or you'll continue to be, to be opening doors to the enemy and repeating cycles. You don't fight for victory. You're standing in it. You're standing in Christ. See, when, when you're attacked in a way that exposes your weaknesses, and it will happen, he's going to come back through the same door. He's going to come try to kick it down, knock it down, and he's going to bring seven other of his friends when you are attacked in a way that exposes your weaknesses, what are you supposed to do? Are you gonna fight? I got bad news for you. Satan is stronger than you. Are you gonna run? He's faster than you. Are you gonna try to endure? He's more patient than you. Or will you stand? Listen to the instruction of God's word. You defend the ground of your life by standing firm in Christ. Fight by standing in the victory that is already yours in Christ. The only thing you have that the enemy doesn't have is that. It's the only thing for which he has no defense to stand in Christ. In the victory that is already mine by his crucifixion and resurrection, I stand in him. This is why the apostle Paul declared, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has all the strength you ever need. God desires to make that strength available to you, but how do we access it? How do we, how do we, what do we do is we're standing firm in Christ. I'm going to give you three things that you need to download. I call them a download. You got to stand firm and download some strength. Be strong in the Lord. You got to download some strength from God as you're standing firm in his presence. So what do we do? Number one, here's the first thing you got to, you got to download. Number one, download strength from God's word. Download strength from God's word. Access to the scripture is so easy. We got little excuse for failing to embed it in our hearts, you guys. Okay? The psalmist says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, 28 says, my soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Okay, so what do we do when we're standing firm in Christ? Man, I'm getting strength. I'm downloading strength from the word of God. The best example of this is through Jesus himself. When Jesus was attacked in spiritual warfare from Satan himself, after Jesus was baptized, it, this story is in Matthew chapter four and Luke chapter four, not in your notes, but if you wanna go study it. Jesus was baptized. When he came out of the water, he got filled with the Holy Spirit, descended on him like a dove, and the Spirit led him into the wilderness For 40 days, he was fasting day and night to prepare for the ministry that God called him to do, and he was about to start. And the Bible says in this story that that Satan came to him at the end of this fasting when he was at his weakest, when he was at his loneliness, when he was at his hungriest, 
Can I give you an acronym? When you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, that's where the enemy wants. He wants to attack your place that's most vulnerable. When you are most vulnerable, that's where he's going to... This is an acronym for HALT, by the way. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. When you're... Those things, HALT, get into the presence of God, okay? Because you are vulnerable for attack, okay? So, so what does the devil do? We're told that the devil, he comes and he starts to tempt Jesus, and, and he doesn't, what he does not do, he doesn't take him up to the high temple and push him off and trick him. That's not what he did to Jesus. And he didn't turn a rock into a piece of bread and go eat it and threw it in his mouth. He didn't do that. He couldn't do that. He didn't have the power to do that. But what he did do was give a suggestion. He made an appeal to Jesus. And that's what his power is. It's a lie. It's a suggestion. He made a suggestion to Jesus. And, and Jesus, every time, y'all know the story, he responds, it is written. He combats the lie of the enemy with the truth of God's word that he had stored up in his heart. It is written, it is written, it is written. Satan didn't even argue back. He simply had to just leave Jesus. But in, in the gospel of Luke chapter four, you go read it later, but it actually says that, that when Satan left, it says that he left his presence, Jesus' presence, until the opportune time came. Now we're not told exactly when the opportune times would come for Satan to come back and tempt or, or discourage Jesus, but we are told that Jesus was tempted in every way like we are, yet he was without sin. So, so uh, theologians, I believe, you guys, and many theologians believe that Satan was active in spiritual warfare throughout his whole life, lying to him, trying to discourage him at opportune times of weak moments, trying to come at Jesus, and he had to be, that's why he had to get away and pray often. What do you do? What do you do when you're standing? You got to download strength from the Word of God. The second thing, number two, you download strength from worship. Worship is a weapon of warfare, it is a prophetic declaration. Worship. Psalm 59, verse 17 says, You are my strength. I sing praise to you. You, God, are my fortress, my God on whom I can rely. Okay, I know some of you don't like singing. You're like, I don't got a voice. I don't like singing. You know, I get it. But you need to get some sang in you. You need to get the sang in. I put an A in it there for some emphasis, some sang in. You need to get some praise in you. It is a weapon of warfare. Here's why. Worship is a weapon because it shifts your focus. As, see, we're all like focused in on and fixing our eyes on the darkness and on the struggle. In fact, it's all we're talking about. We're talking to people about it. We're worrying about it. We're complaining about it. And, and, and the more we do that, the more it just magnifies the stronghold and the tighter the grip of the stronghold gets in our life. But when you worship, you remember who God is in the midst of the trouble. It, worship shifts your focus. Worship. It, it, it transforms, it doesn't, shift the, it doesn't just shift the focus, but it can transform your circumstance. Worship can break the chains and open the prison doors, okay? When you're worshiping, especially when we're declaring the word of God in worship, there's so many lyrics of the word of God. Isaiah 40 and 8 tells us that the things of this world will wither and fall, and earth itself will pass away, but the word of God endures forever. Worship changes circumstances. And not only that, but worship, did you know worship changes the enemy's position in your life? See, the Bible tells us, Psalm tells us in Psalm 23, verse 3, it says, God inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits it. He dwells in the presence of, of his people. See, when you worship God, you are, you, you are bringing the presence of God into your room, into your home, into your circumstance, and where the presence of God is, the enemy has to flee. It's a weapon. It's a weapon you need to... So as you're standing in Christ, not flip-flopping kingdoms, man, that's why you're repeating the cycle. It's because you, you're going to work in a different kingdom. You're getting under a different kingdom. You're over here in another kingdom, and, and you're, you need to remain in Christ in the power of His might. And as I'm remaining, standing in Him, suited up with the armor of God, I'm downloading strength from His Word. I'm downloading strength from worship. And then number three... I'm downloading strength from waiting. I know you don't like that. I don't either. I hate waiting. But it, it's, how, it's how we get strength. When you wait the right way, you, when we don't wait the right way, it, it drains us. But when we wait the right way, it renews our strength. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30 and 31. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. 
You wait, and, and, and while you're waiting, trust God. What are you doing while you're waiting? You're trusting God. I'm trusting his word. I'm trusting his promises. I'm trusting his timing. I'm waiting, and I'm trusting the timing and the promises of God. I'm waiting, and while I'm waiting, I'm praying. I'm not isolating. I'm talking to God. I'm crying out to God. I'm declaring the truth to God. I'm proclaiming my victory before I see it. I'm trusting God. I'm praying, and while I'm waiting, by the way, while you're waiting, you're also acting. Because while you're waiting, God will tell you some things. He'll give you a step. He'll tell you, delete that number, block that hooch. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. That came out. I don't know who knew. Well. Shoot. So, who was that for? I'm just kidding. Dang it. Come on, but, but when God, God will tell you some stuff. And as you're waiting, and you're in Christ, and he's, you're, you're just downloading from the kingdom of God. You're in the kingdom. You're getting revelation. He's going to tell you, hey, here's a step. Stop that. Do that. Step here. And you better act on that. While you're waiting, you're acting. It's not just stopping. Waiting isn't stopping. It's listening and responding to God. While I'm waiting, I'm responding. Okay, as we, I, two important truths in this part of spiritual warfare I need to give you is when you're standing firm in your identity in Christ, there's two important truths that you need, to, you need to receive before we actually talk about dominion and victory next week, okay? The armor of God, dominion and victory. You got you to receive these two truths. And I put it in first person with an exclamation mark because we're going to say them together, okay? First, we're going to write it, then we're going to say it. You got you to believe this truth, the truth of God's word. I can be free. I want you to say that with me. One, two, three. I can be free. Some of you don't believe this, and you're, you're convinced that you're doomed to repeat the cycle. You expect it. You expect it to repeat itself. You've become uh, comfortable with that cycle. You need to know that you can be free indeed, completely free. You don't have to, you have to repeat it ever again. You can be free free. I don't have to be an alcoholic. I don't have to suffer with anxiety. I don't have to have suicidal thoughts. I don't have to continue. I don't have to. You don't. You can be free. The cycle can be broken in Jesus' name. He came to break it. You can be free if you learn how to stand. Stand in Christ. That's your victory. It's through here. It's right here. Get in his kingdom. Get under his leadership. Get under his covering. I love what Romans chapter 8 says. This message paraphrase says it like this. He says, you no longer have to live under the continuous low-lying black cloud. Some of you feel like that, that, that describes what you're feeling and experiencing. That cycle has become such an expectation that you're not even, you can't live in the joy and the fullness and the abundant life. You're living under a low lying black cloud. But he says this, you no longer have to live under that. Because a new power is available for you here today, everybody. This power is in operation. It's the spirit of life in Christ. Like a strong wind has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you. Freeing you from a faded lifetime, from a cycle repeating itself, a faded lifetime, a brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. I can be free and I need you to believe that that you don't have to go through cycles of deliverance and breaking strongholds that there's so much more God has for you so much more that God has for you than that cycle if we can stand firm and stay with me and I'll show you it's it's got to include this this dominion it's got to include it without it you'll repeat it stand firm I can be free and then here's the second truth I can be restored some of you, okay, because some of you bought into maybe the first part, but this part is where I'm going to stretch you. You not only can be free, but it can be better than it was before. Okay? And I need you to believe that, that you can be restored. Everything the enemy took, that you're not stained, you're, it's not too late, you're, you're not too far gone and too messed up. No, 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 you, it, it, it can be, I can be restored. Come on, say it with me. One, two, three. I can be restored. Now watch this verse. Receive it in your heart. Don't stir and leave just yet. Psalm chapter 71. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, man, we've seen it. 
We've, we've, we've been lied to. We've been tripped up. You will restore my life again from the depths of hell and my bondage and my brokenness. You will again bring me up. God can restore you again. And I'm not, I'm not, don't get caught up in this, uh, that you're a Christian and, and like, I'm not talking, listen to me. You got to surrender. You got to go all in. This is where it starts, trusting God. You can be free, you can be restored and coming under the covering of God. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.